Five minutes, inshallah, we're going to do. Smile, we can start now. One minute. Yeah. So, yeah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, hello to our third webinar in medical physics. Welcome, everyone. So today we'll start our third webinar about uh, all you need to know about QA and QC in radiation therapy. It will be presented by Sid Mohammed bin Habib, PhD Dab from USA. So welcome Mohammed to the third webinar. We can start. Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. So uh, hello everybody, good morning. Afternoon, good night. It depends on where you are in the world. We see uh, at least a uh, lot of people registered uh, from from India, from Morocco, from parts of the world. So welcome to this uh, educational events. Uh, so today's presentation uh, is you need to know about what issues and quality control and radiation therapy. This is for the uh, the U.S. perspective, uh, so and, uh, it's not, could you could you mute, please? There's an echo. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so today's presentation is all you need to know about quality issues and quality control, uh, uh, quality control, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is the practice uh, in the U.S. I'm a medical physicist in the U.S. I practice here. So first of all, I would like to uh, to thank the Algerian uh, medical physicists for organizing this event. And uh, and as I mentioned, uh, today's presentation, so I will go through a few AAPM report. If you don't know what the AAPM TG report is, it, it stands for American Association of Medical Physicists Task Group. So I will cover several task groups today uh, quickly. And then, um, and the task groups, the APM task groups basically are the, the gold standard in the US. Uh, we use them in the US and I believe worldwide as well. Uh, and then um, uh, our field as a, our, uh, our uh, job as a medical physicist is, is very vital to the clinic so, uh, and we are very fortunate to work with cancer patient. Uh, I thought this topic is very, very relevant to day-to-day -day work basically because uh, it addresses issues about safety, about efficiency of treatment. So, and we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go through that. So uh, quickly, uh, I'm just gonna introduce myself. Um, so uh, I studied in Algeria, University of Tlemcen. I got my master's and PhD, uh, my master's and DOS in, in Algerian solid state physics. And then I had uh, the opportunity to, uh, to do a training at the University of Houston uh, for, uh, for a year. And then after that, I discovered the field of, uh, of medical physics at MD Anderson Houston, in MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And, and I was, that's it. This is what I want to do. <laughs> I want to do medical physics. So, and after that, I did my master's and, and PhD at East Carolina University. And, and uh, next slide, please. Uh, after my uh, PhD and master's, it was followed by a residency at a Comprehensive Cancer Center uh, at the University of Alabama. So it was a two years program, two years uh, clinical rotation. Uh, it, it was very, very, uh, a very good experience. I uh, worked with uh, top-notch physicists and uh, 
that's the place where uh, where we implemented HyperArc basically uh, before it was released by by Varian. So and then after uh, my residency, I found, uh, my first job was working as a consultant, physics consultant. Uh, it was just a short period of time, and then um, and then I moved to, to Innova, where I am right now at Fairfax. Fairfax, Virginia, is in the DC metro area. Uh, I'm working there as a medical physicist. Next slide, please. So uh, just a quick introduction about, about uh, Innova. So um, five, uh, five hospitals, the, the main, it's, a, it's a chain of hospitals. So I work at the main site on the left side and we have four, uh, four satellites. Uh, we try to standardize the, the practice uh, across the system. It's a very challenging project. That's what we are uh, working on right now. Next. Okay, so in the, the Innova system, uh, mm. we have several linear accelerators. We have uh, five true beam machines. They are all beam mashed. And that's a project I was leading at Innova. So basically we have, um, uh, we have one beam model for all the true beam machines and one beam model for all the Trilogy machines. So we have, as I mentioned, five true beam machines and we have uh, four trilogy machines and one cyber knife. Uh, for the brachytherapy, we have uh, three HDR unit across the system. We also have uh, uh, IORT, we do IORT with, uh, with the Zeiss machine. We have two sources. And for protons, we have two gantries. Uh, scanners across the system, we have actually five scanners, not two. We have five GE scanners and one Canon. And we also have uh, an MRI unit in our department. So a uh, treatment planning system, we use mainly Eclipse. But we introduced Ray Station uh, lately, I would say about six months ago. Uh, we use uh, precision accurate for CyberKnife, for HDR on Centra, and LDR uh, the very seed. And for record, record and verify, we use mm. ARIA. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, right, it's okay now. Yeah, That's now okay. we Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, for treatment, we, provi we provide a, a wide variety of treatment, the, the traditional 3D CRT. Uh, we do VMAT. I would say 80% of our patients are VMAT. Uh, we do have an SRS program. Uh, we do SRSs with, uh, with the CyberKnife machine. We have the M6 with the, with the MLCs. And, uh, and we are... We are uh, Introducing HyperArc with uh, with a very Linux, hopefully soon with a true beam. And uh, the SBRT, we do offer SBRTs for abdomen, thorax, and and bone, spine for uh, with both with CyberKnife and and true beam machines. And for the brachy therapy, we cover a wide variety of brachy treatment. Savvy for breast, we do IORTs, intra op for breast. Uh, the figos for prostate uh, mat uh, for bone basically gyn we do tnr tendon and rings and cylinders and etc we do a wide variety of brachytherapy treatment next slide please so staff wise we have about 10 physicians board certified physicians we have around 18 physicists 10 of them are board certified the symmetrists, as you may know, in the U.S., uh, not the physicists do the plan, but uh, the plan is done by a uh, symmetrist. We have, I would say, 15 uh, across the system. Uh, Smail, could you mute, please? Thank you. Uh, radiation therapists, about 20 radiation therapists. Uh, we have radiation nurses and administration. As you can see, uh, radiation department uh, staff from uh, physicists, MDs, the symmetrists. It's uh, uh, many, many small groups. 
and uh, we treat daily about 230 patients uh, across the system uh, with LINAC and we have about 12 patients daily. Uh, next slide please for the brekkie. Uh, so for the accreditation, we used to have ACR accreditation, the American College of Radiology, and then we just switched, I would say, about two years ago to APAX, uh, which stands for, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an ASHRO accreditation program for, for excellence. Uh, next slide. So. So this is the table of content today. I will start with the introduction about the QA and the QC, how, we, how it was uh, introduced to the medical physics community and uh, the importance, uh, what are the motivations behind, uh, behind uh, giving, giving this, uh, this talk. Uh, next, I will follow up with uh, the QA for, uh, for LINAC, for uh, ex uh, external beam radiation therapy. And then, uh, and then it will be followed by, uh, I would say, QA for a clinical aspect for a patient-specific QA, what we do in the clinic when we do initial chart checks, weekly checks, uh, safety, safety meetings, all, uh, all, all this. So because all of them are very relevant in the day-to-day -day clinic and all of them uh, basically are used as a, as a QA or QC or a QM, uh, in the department. Next slide, please. Uh, so the second part of this presentation, we cover uh, quality assurance for scanners, uh, for the treatment planning system, uh, the bracket therapy, and we're gonna spice it up with, uh, with the proton. And, uh, but this, this talk will be uh, next month. And uh, uh, it was actually postponed. It was supposed to be next week, but uh, it is postponed to uh, the first Saturday of uh, of, uh, of March. Next slide, please. So, question. So, why QA, QC? Why this topic? Uh, initially, uh, initially, when presenting this pr presentation, uh, it was more dedicated to uh, Algerian medical physicist audience. Uh, and then, um, uh, and of course, uh, all phys uh, medical physicists worldwide are more than welcome to uh, to attend and hopefully, hopefully learn from uh, from a medical physicist with the U.S. Uh, working in, in the U. in the United States. So the motivations, uh, the first one was uh, in the last five to ten years, there was uh, implementation implementation of uh, a lot of technologies, equipment uh, in Algeria in the past five, ten years, uh, introduction of uh, true beam variant, electron machines, uh, TOMO, and uh, it is good that uh, we have uh, new machines, new technologies, new equipment, but it is very, very critical uh, to Muhammad, your sound. It's freezing, Muhammad. It's very, very important, even though it is a uh, basic, basically uh, basic information about radiation therapy and. Uh, in medical physics, but very, very important for day-to-day -day, uh, operations. So the first rule I, I learned in medical physics in medical physics is to never assume, never assume that a QA was done, never assume that things will go right without a check. So this is very, very important. So. Uh, I was called. I remember one time uh, I had uh, I was in charge of a, a brachy on on a, that specific date, and then I was called by the nurse, and uh, she already said the patient on the table, uh, 
and the MD, the, the physician, was, was ready about ready to treat the patient. So the question to me, it was challenging. I was, I was new in the field. I was a young medical physicist. And then the question was, was what should I do? Should I just proceed with treatment or, or what should I do? And then uh, I made the, good, the right call, which is basically to remove the patient from the table, do my QA, make sure everything is running right before we treat the patient. And as you may know, brachytherapy treatment, the dose is really high. So if one dose is delivered wrong, it's a, it's a medical event, it's a misadministration. So we have to be very, very careful and, uh, and really not pay attention to, uh, I, I wouldn't say not pay attention, but I would say uh, uh, we have to handle the pressure sometimes from radiation oncologists, from nursing team uh, the right way. And the right way was to remove the patient from the table, do the QA, make sure everything went right, and then uh, and then move forward with the treatment. And this is very, very, very important. We should never be, uh, we should never, uh, never say, okay, yes, let's let's move with treatment because it's never happened that the QA failed. Well, it fails on that specific time you decide to treat the patient with that QA, and it's a millions of dollars lawsuit. So. Uh, and, and honestly, in my 10 plus years of clinical experience, uh, I've seen that most failures occur when QA is not done, when, when there's no QA procedures, uh, no QA program established, or, or maybe there is a QA program established but not well executed. So, and, and QA honestly be, uh, plays a big role in our day-to-day work <laughs> basically i would say 70 percent of our work every day is qa and qc we verify uh the patient plan radiation plan make sure the radiation plan is good make sure all the doses are good so so uh, uh, that's that's why i thought this is very very critical uh topic even though it's basics but very very uh, useful for uh, for the medical physics community and the last point is uh, that uh, here we can never ever jeopardize patient public radiation staff safety because of economical logistical or based on old practice reason why I'm saying this is is because uh, uh, because when I was doing um, when I when I did my search about the QA, who does the QA, and at what time the QA is done, I had some answers that uh, the QA in in some practice, uh, some hospitals, they do the QA in the middle of the day, and I really think this is very 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 wrong. We cannot assume that the output are are right. We cannot assume that the there's no mechanical issue. So we must do the QA before we treat the patient. This is a must. So we cannot just do the, the QA in the middle of the day because of logistical reasons or because of economical reasons. We must do the QA first because anything we do, if we do it right, uh, the impact is the patient. It's a good treatment for the patient. If we do it wrong, it's, it's a misadministration. So anything we do will be impacted in the patient. That's the criticality about our job. And uh, as we say here in the US, safety is no accident. So we have to be careful in uh, executing, executing uh, quality assurance, quality control, as well as think outside the box, uh, see if our processes are, uh, are uh, uh, good to catch any mistake from happening, any mistake going through the cracks because as I showed earlier in the in the department radiation oncology department, we don't have we, we not only have physicists, we have physicists, we have MDs, we have the symmetrists. So we have to put in place we have to put in place stops that will catch any error from happening. Because if we don't catch it, that error or that mistake, it will get to the patient and that's that's the that's what we don't want to happen basically next slide please 
So, so the question now is, why do we need the QA? And as I mentioned, the QA, QC is very important. So we do it because uh, a machine malfunction, uh, mechanical breakdown, and we do see it. I see it personally uh, almost every day. I have to replace uh, an MLC motor of the machine. Uh, I see it almost every, every day. We have malfunctions of the machine. Um, mm -hmm. I was called, uh, I can recall uh, a case, I was called by a uh, by therapist, uh, I would say about six months ago, and the QA failed, the, the daily QA failed on the machine, uh, the imaging part failed, and then when I investigated, uh, and this is the first time it's happened to me in 10 plus 10 years of clinical experience, uh, so the gantry was off, the gantry lost calibration, the gantry was off by three degrees. <laughs> and so I felt very happy in the sense that we do this QA every single day and every single day we don't catch anything. So I felt very happy that on that, that day, the QA process showed how important we have to do the QA. Because if we don't do the QA and assume things will go right, then we treat the patient wrong. And so I was very, very happy. And myself and the radiation therapists were also extremely happy. Okay, this QA procedure takes one hour, but it is here for a reason. And that's patient safety. So, so it was really nice that therapists saw this uh, as well. So as I mentioned, the reason we do the QA because machine malfunction, mechanical breakdowns, physical accidents. Sometimes mm. uh, I can recall also a case where, uh, where uh, the gantry, basically therapists were moving the gantry from outside the machine and then they had a step, step stool and when the machine, machine hit it, the, the couch uh, jumped from the position. And so we had to do major, major work like recalibrate all the different axes. And so, so things happen, failure happen, machine breakdown happen. So we had, that's why we need to do uh, a QA. Uh, next slide, please. So just quick definitions mm -hmm. here. Uh, so QC stands for uh, basically addressing uh, equipment hardware and software such as uh, LINAC to, uh, to check the deviation of a specific entity from, from the baseline, let's say, uh, let's say the gantry angle, the test we do, we do on a monthly basis. Uh, quality assurance and this definition was actually uh, from the International Standard Organization and it was uh, it was uh, then adjusted by the American National Standard. Uh, so basically, quality assurance is defined as all those planned or, uh, or systematic actions necessary to provide adequate confidence that a product or service will satisfy given, re uh, will satisfy given requirement for quality. And, uh, and basically, uh, another term that's uh, either you hear from today or from uh, webinars in the future is also QM. So basically, QC is, uh, is under QA and, uh, and Q, QM is like the, the major umbrella. It's, it covers QC and QA as well. So some of the QAs are just for product, let's say hardware or software. But uh, but the QA in general is also QM is, covers everything covers also processes basically, and uh, and it it is a comprehensive quality assurance program. Next slide. So what is the overall goal? So the overall goal when we treat a patient uh, uh, with the radiation treatment. So we want that the treatment we deliver to the patient dose-wise has to be within 5% of the prescription dose. This is our goal. And this is, the, this, uh, this is from, uh, from the ICRU recommendations. So this is our goal. So the end goal 
the treatment we deliver to the patient has to be within 5% of what we intend uh, to, give, uh, to give to the patient. And, um, and as you may know, uh, as you all of you know, radiation treatment is not only uh, a TPS treatment planning system. Radiation treatment is very, very complex. And we're gonna go through this in the next few slices. So uh, next slide, please. So this is what I was talking about. Radiation treatment is a complex uh, treatment. So basically the patient comes to the clinic, we do a CT scan and then the CT scans are, uh, are exported to the treatment planning system. Uh, in the treatment planning system, we, know we need other images to, uh, to basically contour the tumor, images as, as, uh, as an MRI, the gold standard for uh, cancer classification. Or, uh, we also need sometimes PET scans. Uh, so, and then we fuse the images and then after we fuse the images, uh, of course, there is contouring. And after the contouring, a, pl a plan is generated. After the plan is generated, we transfer the plan to the treatment machine. And then we do our QAs and then we treat the patient. So as you can see, uh, next slide, please. As you can see, uh, next slide. As you can see, so here basically I just listed what, what I, I just mentioned. Radiation treatment, there are several steps. So uh, it is very critical that uh, we, need, we need some kind of quality assurance uh, for, for each step we do. Uh, so that's very important. The first step, for example, is the CT. So, so definitely, uh, uh, we, we use the CT scanner every single day to scan patients, so we do need a CT, a, a CT QA. So the CT QA, and hopefully we're going to talk about this in our next presentation. Uh, there's the involvement of the TPS, so there must be a QA for the treatment planning system. And, and, and you can see that there are some processes, they need QA as well, and then at the end is the patient-specific QA. Next slide, please. So the goal of the QA program for linear accelerators. So now for today's presentation, we're gonna focus more on the LINAC and then processes. So the goal of the QA program for linear accelerator is to assure that uh, the machine characteristics do not deviate significantly from their baseline values acquired at the time of acceptance and commissioning. And this is very, very important. So, so at the time of acceptance of the machine, uh, basically after we accept the machine, we do, we do commissioning. And when we do commissioning, we, uh, we record all these baselines uh, for the daily QA, for the monthly QA. And then, so the goal from the QA for the LINAC is to make sure uh, all these deviations, daily deviations do, uh, are within the limit, within the limit that we will see uh, in the next slides. Next slide, please. So, uh, so as I mentioned previously, uh, in the US, the AAPM TG report are considered as a standard, the gold standard. So AAPM TG stands for American Association of Physicists in Medicine and TG is task group. So uh, one of the earliest task groups about QA was published in 1984, and that was task group 13. And then a decade later, uh, TG40 was, was published, uh, Comprehensive QA for Radiation Oncology. We still use to this date, uh, as you can see, this paper was published in 1994, but we still use it. This is how, how important how, how uh, this TG report is. And basically, this TG report covers almost everything in the clinic, uh, covers uh, not only Linux, but covers Linux, covers Brachy, covers TPS, treatment planning system, covers CT scanners. So this is a very, very good reference, and I would definitely recommend it to all medical physicists. 
and uh, and uh, a newer publication, which is TG1482, and this is what we use, medical physicists. Uh, we use uh, for the Linux. Basically, it's uh, it's only one one portion, one uh, part of the puzzle. So this is specific to the Linux 142, uh, and then TG100. There's a typo. AAPT PTG should be actually AAPM. I apologize, it's just a typo. Uh, AAPM TG100 is a very good paper that was published in 2016. Basically, it just shows, uh, uh, it, it trains physicists to think about failure modes and how we can address, we can pick, let's say, anything we do in the clinic, for example, just regular IMRT treatment for head and neck and then and then uh, and then uh, basically check what's the errors that can happen uh, for for this st specific technique head and neck treatment uh, and I would definitely recommend everybody to uh, to check uh, AAPM TG100 it's a very very good document to assess some uh, failure modes because because when you are assessing a failure mode and you see that the error can be coming from um, from fusion, let's say from fusion, okay. Uh, if the high, if the uh, the score risk for fusion is high, then then from this DG one hundred, you will know that you need to address that in your clinic. You are doing something wrong in the fusion. That's uh, that's why you, that score is really high, and uh, and it needs attention basically. Uh, so and also one very very good paper is uh, the medical the MPPG. Uh, MP, uh, basically, it's the the practical uh, practical recommendation medical physics practice guidelines for medical uh, accelerators. And uh, you can you can find all these papers in the AAPM website, and there are more. There's one for the CT scanner, one for Tomo, one for uh, for SRSs. One there's a lot of TG report, and I invite everybody to to go through this TG report. Uh, next slide, please. So, who should perform the QA or the QC? Uh, usually, the, not usually here in the US. So, uh, one, one thing I forgot to mention about these TG reports. Uh, these TG reports, AAPM TG reports, are recommendations. It is not a law. They are recommendations. You can follow them or you can, you can do better. Uh, but in some state, they started implementing these TG reports as a law, like uh, TG1482, I think in Ohio State, I believe. Uh, I think it is a law. So when you are doing your, your monthly QA and you find something you know, out of tolerance, then you have to work with the engineer to fix that issue. This is how important these TG reports are. Very, very important. We use them as recommendations but in some state, they are used as a law, as a regulation, basically. So the QA is performed by a, a qualified medical physicist. A qualified medical physicist is, in the US is defined as a, a board, board certified medical physicist. And uh, it can also be performed by a trainee under uh, a medical physicist, qualified medical physicist supervision. And this is what basically therapists do every single day. Uh, radiation therapists perform the, the daily QA here in the United States. It's not physicists who do that. So radiation therapists do it. And then uh, physicists, they basically come in the morning and then they check, they check the result and they check everything. And, uh, and also training is not only radiation therapists, but physicists as well. Next slide, please. There is there is like a delay. So so quickly a conclusion about this introduction is basically there should be no ambiguity on the importance of performing a QA or a QC on a regular basis. This is very important to assure 
the integrity and safety of radiation treatment to cancer patients. So we have a duty as a medical physicist to work as, as a safety net and to provide a safe treatment to the patient and a good treatment to the patient. So there should be no ambiguity on that. Next slide, please. So uh, this is this is just uh, so we're going to talk now quickly about the uh, key way for the LINAC. Uh, so I'm just showing some pictures here of uh, varying machine on the left side and and the cyber knife I was doing performing an annual QA for uh, for old uh, cyber knife unit. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in this slide, uh, this slide basically gives uh, as you can see, there are two columns. There is the MPPG, which is the Medical Physics Practice Guideline, and there's Odeniel. So basically, Odeniel did the same work as the MPPG to, uh, to estimate what is the score for the RPM. The RPM is defined as the risk priority number, and, uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, defined in the APM TG100. And I would definitely recommend uh, again one more time this TG report. So basically, in this TG report, they mm -hmm. deter they de determine the RPN, which is uh, which is uh, a product of the occurrence, the severity, and the detectability. And as as the, this number goes high, as it shows, you need to do something here. You need a very good QA here or a big failure will happen. So as the score is high, as the risk of a failure is high as well. So, and as you can see, both from the MPPGA and from Odeniel, that's the output constancy is very, is very, very important. So if, 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 um, if an output constancy is not right, then it's definitely gonna gonna affect the patient treatment, and it will be like a, a, a misadministration. This is why um, this is why uh, I thought uh, when when I heard uh, okay. So this is why I thought it is very very important to uh, for the QA to do it in the morning and not midday. This is very very critical. So let's uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a, a table from APM TG142. So this is the daily QA that is performed in the US by the radiation therapist. So it has three parts. It has the symmetry part. Okay. So, um, so this is just a, a daily, basically daily QA that therapists uh, do. Uh, it has a dissymmetry part, a mechanical part, as well as safety part. And as you can see, it is divided in non-IMRT, which is 3D, IMRT, and SRSs and SBRTs. And of course, uh, for SRS and SBRTs, you need you need tighter tolerance, for, tighter mechanical tolerance, because we're talking about geometric localization in the space. So we need more uh, mechanical tolerance to that. Uh, next slide, please. And you can find uh, this table in the task group 142 uh, uh, report. So for the daily QA, as I mentioned, uh, it is performed by the by the therapist. So so basically, we are checking the daily deviations of the output flatness and symmetry of the machine, and uh, and the baseline is captured after acceptance of of the machine. Uh, well, actually, uh, actually, after commissioning and calibration of the machine, uh, a baseline is immediately captured uh, after that. And uh, next slide, please. And then from day to day, a therapist, this is uh, what I was showing in the previous slice is uh, daily QA3 product from SNC from Sun Nuclear. But there are several products in the market. So there's a beam checker, there's tracker, which is an older system. There's a lot of product. Uh, this product is very user friendly and uh, for for everyone, for everybody, for calibration physicists or for 
uh, radiation therapies to use it on a daily basis. And you can set up you can set up your database on a server like uh, like uh, I did here. So I can see all machines' performance across the system, and this is very very useful information you get from the machine. Could you go next, please? Next slide, please. So so this is what we see. Uh, if you wanna see uh, how your machine is behaving. So basically we track three things every single day, uh, flatness, symmetry, and, uh, and machine output. And usually what I observed in my clinical, uh, um, in my few years of experience that when you put the new machine, especially for these true beam machines, uh, uh, the, 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 there, is, there is an increase of, of the output because of the chamber, but after seven, eight months, it flattens out, it would be more flat, but, but usually the output will increase uh, gradually and after seven, eight months, it, it usually stabilizes. Next slide, please. Uh, so what are the action levels? So let's say I'm a radiation therapist. I did the QA this morning. What should I do? So if my output are less than 3%, that's our uh, first level. So they can treat, we are good. If they measure the output between three to 5%, they have instructions of treating the machine, but they have to notify physics. Physics has to investigate what's going on. Why is it more than 3%, but less than 5%. And then the third level is if the output are 5%, uh, more than 5%, then we cannot treat. Uh, therapist has to call physics and then physics need to investigate. Uh, I believe in my 10 years, uh, I was called, uh, I was called, I think three times on the machine where the outputs were more than 5%. And the issue was actually coming not from, uh, not from the machine, but the issue was coming from the daily QA device. Maybe, maybe it was dropped or something and it was giving some wrong, wrong, wrong numbers. Because what I did when I was called, uh, I repeated myself uh, to do like completely independent and I got the same number as therapists got more than 5%. Then I decided to just put the farmer chamber and check my output with the solid water. And then I confirmed that my output were good. It's just the device was not, was not behaving well. Uh, next slide, please. So this is basically just a summary about the daily QA in the US. So it has three components, the symmetry, the mechanical, and the safety, and uh, also uh, done by a radiation therapist. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the monthly QA. So the daily QA, I would say, takes about 30 to 45 minutes, but the monthly QA takes more time and, and actually, uh, I apologize, but uh, I forgot to mention that uh, for the daily QA, we started exploring, uh, because we have a varying machine, so we started exploring the MPC, the machine performance check. Uh, it is a very good tool provided by Varian, but it does not replace the daily QA that has to be performed, and this has to be very, very uh, clear. It is a tool to check uh, all the mechanical uh, deviations, but it cannot be uh, used for, uh, for output check, even, even varying in the document. They say uh, the release document for the MPC, they clearly state that this MPC check is not, uh, cannot replace your output check. So if there's a legal issue, if you are using uh, the MPC uh, for a daily QA, uh, for the output, if if something happens and there is a legal a legal issue, then in court you will definitely lose 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 the battle because very clearly say uh, give this statement. So this table is just uh, uh, the test that should be performed and the deviations for uh, for the monthly QA, and this is also from uh, AAPM Task Group 142. So you see that the symmetry, the mechanical, and the safety part. Uh, this this test is performed by a physicist. Uh, it used to take <laughs> this test used to take me maybe one hour 
but now it is taking more time because we have newer machines, we have new equipment, new techniques. So, so this QA keeps adding and adding more time. And uh, for example, why I'm saying one hour because uh, because we do gating, so we have to include the gating parts. We do surface guided, so we have to include the surface guided part. We do several things, so this is why the QA is getting longer and longer. But there are some product that uh, are in the market that helps you uh, helps you uh, be efficient in your work and do it in a really quick time, uh, uh, short time. Next slide, please. So, so at Innova, it is, uh, as I mentioned, well, this slide is not in the correct place. This is for, I apologize for that. This is just for the daily QA. So basically we do a combination between the daily QA for output and then we do the, var the variant MPC, not for the output, for, but for the mechanical and for the OBI, for the onboard imaging. Next slide, please. Uh, a monthly QA, as I mentioned, so uh, so what are the tools that you need? You need a thermometer and a barometer to correct for the temperature and pressure correction. And then you need, you need a farmer chamber, uh, a 12 farmer chamber and, and an electrometer. And we usually do it in solid water. It is not convenient to do it on on uh, liquid water. Uh, we, do, we do the liquid water only one time a year. Uh, basically, that's TG51. And then on a monthly basis, we use solid wire with a farmer chamber. Uh, for the imaging parts uh, at Innova, we have Mobius. We are lucky enough to have Mobius, so everything is processed uh, quickly. And then uh, we use standard imaging as well. Uh, there are a lot of product that can be used uh, for, uh, for imaging Mobius, standard imaging, CAT fan for CBCT. And uh, you have you have to decide what tools you gonna uh, you gonna use in in your clinic, and also for for the mechanical uh, check. <laughs> As a physicist, we use a lot of tape, <laughs> a lot of tape and ruler and level. Next slide, please. So I'm just sharing with you quickly here what we do on a monthly basis. So this is for safety. So we check the, the accessory interlock for electrons, uh, for hard, hard wedges. We don't use hard wedges anymore. We use EDW and has dynamic wedge. We check the door in the locks. So basically we just let the beam on and then, uh, and then uh, open the door and uh, we, have to make, we have to make sure that the beam shut off when the door is open. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, the audiovisual system works well. Uh, we cannot treat the patient if we don't see the patient or if we don't if we cannot communicate with the patient by law we cannot do it so we have to to do these checks every single day next slide uh, for the mechanical part we do the gantry angle rotations we do the four cardinal angles the appa right right lateral basically the zero the 180 the 90 and the 270 and we do the same thing for the collimator uh, accuracy of the couch positioning, we do all the three angles, the, the longitudinal, the, the lateral, the vert, and we also do uh, for, uh, for uh, couch angles. Now we have 6D couches, so we have to check all those uh, couches as well, the pitch, the roll, and the yaw as well. Next, and we do have a digital ruler that we use when we do these uh, checks. Next slide. Uh, for the mechanical, we also check the, the crosshair centering, uh, of course, the front pointer, and then uh, the ODI, the optical um, uh, digital, uh, which uh, the optical, uh, uh, the ODI that gives, uh, gives the distance, that's also very important uh, to check on a monthly basis. We, we also do it on a daily basis as well. Next slide. Uh, this is also part of the mechanical. So as I mentioned, we use Mobius. Uh, we do have phantoms. Uh, so to check uh, light field versus uh, light field size versus positioning of the jaws. So we have tests for the jaws for the MLCs as well. And then our criteria are one millimeter and they are actually uh, tighter than the recommendations provided by the, uh, 
uh, by uh, APM task group 142. Uh, we also checked the live field size versus uh, positioning for uh, for symmetric and asymmetric jaws for and also for MLCs and, and jaws as well. Why MLCs? Because as I mentioned, most of most of our, of our treatment is VNAT, so we treat more with MLCs than than jaws. So that's why we need uh, QA for this. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the dissymmetry part, basically, this is just a temperature and pressure correction. This is very important, very, very important. So, uh, especially in a big department where, where you have uh, multiple chambers, you have multiple electrometers. This is very important. The first thing that is actually two things I, I really want to point. Uh, two things very important just from my experience. First of all, you need to have a protected Excel sheet. If you don't have a protected Excel sheet and you have several users, then you, you, you may lose all, um, uh, all uh, smell. Could you please uh, share or Abdelhay presentation? Hello? Okay. Uh, two, two things that are very important. Next slide. Where output check. More, next. Yes. So two things are very important. To have the Excel sheet protected, nobody can mess up with the Excel sheet, especially if you have many users. And the second thing is you have to, uh, you have to identify your chamber, especially if you have many chambers in the department. Uh, that's very important because it's going to affect your output because the deviation from one chamber to another chamber can go to up to 3%. So this is very, very important. Next slide, please. So for the next slide, uh, we do basically, this is an output check and, uh, and the energy check. So uh, in the department, we have six photon energies and six electron energies. Uh, this is a true beam machine. So, uh, so that's, what, that's what we do. So we just use solid water phantom. It's an SAD setup, uh, SAD 100. And then, uh, and then the chamber is at 10 cm depth. Next slide, please. Uh, this is for, for electrons. So for the electrons, we have the 6, 9, 12, uh, 12, and 16, and 20. The same thing, we do output check, and we do energy check, and for the output check, we do the measurements at DRF, uh, distance of reference. Next slide, please. Uh, for the imaging, uh, Mobius is a very good uh, tool. So everything is automated. We use uh, Mobius Phantom so as, as well as Mobius uh, software. So basically for the KV, for the NV, for, uh, for the CBCT, what we check, we check the scaling, we check the spatial resolution, the contrast, the uniformity, and the noise. We do this on a monthly basis. Next slide. Uh, this, is, uh, this is beam flatness and symmetry. So we do an independent beam flatness and symmetry. Therapists do it every single day, but we also do it independently of therapists and they make sure uh, our criteria are satisfied, which is uh, 2% on a monthly basis. Next. Uh, the imaging, we, we already spoke about CBCT. CBCT is the same. Uh, we have uh, uh, the tests that we do are very similar to the KV and the MV. Uh, so we do geometric distortions, spatial resolution, contrast, and uh, uh, uniformity as well. Next slide. Uh, MLCs, uh, some physicists, uh, uh, MLCs, the recommendation is to do on a weekly basis. So uh, we do it on a weekly and uh, on a monthly basis as well. Uh, what we consider for weekly is just an IMRT QA. And the monthly, mm. monthly QA is more, uh, more advanced. Next slide. I apologize, uh, I'm going quickly through the slides because they already spent 55 minutes. So we also have to check the daily QA that was done by therapists. So we check all the data for output flatness and symmetry for a month. This is part of our monthly QA. Next slide. 
uh, OSMS, because we have a surface guided system, we use uh, Vision RT. So therapists do the do the basically the daily QA every day, and uh, and the physicists do the cube calibration as well as uh, the entire system calibration on a monthly basis. And QA. Next slide. Uh, this is just for the annual uh, QA, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Next slide, but I will go. Next slide has, is more descriptive. Uh, next, this is mechanical and safety. Uh, we do also for enhanced dynamic wedge. Uh, next. I apologize, I'm going quickly through this, but I'm going to talk about this uh, in the next slides. So this is for the multi-leaf collimator and this is for the OBI. Next slide. This is just for the CBCT and, uh, and the EPID as well. Next. So basically, this is what we do on a yearly basis. Uh, we use the IBA or the Sun Nuclear Cylindrical Shape Water Tank. We do, uh, for the dissimetry part, we do scans, PDDs and profiles. Uh, and then after that, we do TG51 and we have to compare with our baseline. We do TG51, which is the machine calibration. And then uh, there are a lot of measurements uh, that uh, that we do on a monthly basis as well as safety checks and mechanical checks and after we finish we have to coordinate with IROC Houston basically we get these OSLDs and TLDs from Andy Anderson and this uh, helps us do an independent check of our out output and we do this uh, every year and in coordination with our uh, annual QA. Next slide. Basically, the independent check will tell us if our output are, are stable or not, or, or, or if they are within uh, the criteria where they should be. So next, uh, I'm just gonna talk quickly about patient-specific QA. Uh, so for VMAT cases, we do patient-specific QA, and for 3D cases, we do the QA with a diode. Basically, with the diode, we just make sure uh, we check the setup of the patient with patient-specific QA. I highly recommend uh, you guys to go through APM TG218. It's, it's a very, very good reference. And for devices, there are plenty of devices in the market for daily, for IMR TQA, Mobius, Sported Dissymmetry, ArcCheck, MapCheck. So, uh, and, and we do this for all VMAT cases. Next. So this is just uh, showing an ArcCheck. It's a uh, an ArcTech device next. This is what we use in my clinic. Uh, we, we, were, we, we were using before. We are not using this anymore because, uh, because we use portal dosimetry. It's, it's, it's much faster. Uh, next slide. This is just a gamma analysis. And that's actually, if you, sorry, if you can go back. Uh, and this is a gamma analysis. Uh, this is a gamma analysis that is recommended by APM TG218. 3% dose, uh, dose difference, 2, two millimeters DTA, which is distance to agreement, and 90% and 90 gamma. So this is the recommendation by uh, APM TG218 for patient-specific QA. Next slide. Uh, so for the initial chart check, uh, each, each, each patient chart goes through a list of initial chart check. Uh, we use, uh, in the clinic, we have ARIA, so we use a lot of encounters. So basically, it's all start with the physician clinical intents. It is a document uh, dropped by the physician, and the, the physician basically uh, checks all the things that, uh, that we're going to do for the patient. For example, this is a prostate uh, VMAT case, and this is the dose. So, so that's the document we always open first and then, and then we go through a list of checks. We check the prescription, we check the CT simulation note, we check the images, and then we check the, the treatment integrity. So we open the treatment planning system and then we go through uh, the plan in detail. And then at the end, and then at the end we drop a document, physics drop a document to show that the patient was um, uh, patient chart was checked, and then we approve. Uh, we approve the treatment for. Uh, uh, we approve the plan for treatment. Basically, if if uh, if this is not done, then therapist will not treat the patient. We have uh, this regulation in the clinic, so this document has to be dropped 
before therapists can treat a patient. Next slide. So this is what I mean by encounter. So we have several encounters. On the left side, you can see ISCI physics initial chart check. Uh, and then on the middle column, you can see the MD planning uh, note, which is the physician intent. And then we just go through a checklist of the things we need to check. Next slide, please. Uh, for the weekly chart check, so every week, uh, sorry, I lost uh, uh, my computer, I lost the image, so, okay, I think I got it, sorry, technical issue. For the weekly chart check, for the weekly chart check, uh, I see the screen now, for the weekly chart check, uh, uh, physics do this every week. Uh, in my clinic, we do it every Thursday. We go through all patient treated in the past five fractions. So basically we check various things. We check the treatment setup versus the SIM setup. We check the RTT timeout, if they did a timeout or not. Uh, we check all the documentation, make sure all the documentation is dropped. We check if the QA was done, as I mentioned, we do diode measurements for 3D cases and VMAT measurements for uh, 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 IMRT QA for VMAT. So that's our QA. And then we check the delivery parameters as well, the, the JAWS, the positioning and, and all that. And we do this on a weekly basis, once a week. Next slide. Uh, and this is the checklist. So after we do the checks, we drop this checklist and make sure that uh, everybody, all physicists are doing the same thing. Next slide. We created checklists because encounters, because we started as, as our uh, physics group started to get larger and larger, we started seeing some deviations, even though we have the same end goal, but things can be done differently. So we started to have these encounters to make sure every every physicist is doing exactly the same thing to be consistent consistency so uh this is another meeting we have every week and this is the department meeting so it is actually includes uh, physicians and administration nurse and the symmetrist and physics as well and we call it a weekly uh, new patient chart check so every new patient that we start we have to do a peer review. We open the treatment, we check all documentation, we check all the patient DVHs, et cetera. We check patient path report, everything before patients start treatment. And we can discuss if there is anything specific that we well, needs to be addressed. Next slide. I think we're almost done and I apologize, I'm a little bit behind. So for safety meetings, we have every Wednesday uh, at 7 a.m. we have a safety meeting. We uh, uh, This is a department meeting. So, uh, so we talk about any issues, any safety issues uh, th from therapists or physicists or the symmetrists or MDs. And we talk about it on Wednesdays and, and uh, we try to find solutions. Every, every morning, uh, the pod, the physicist of the day, uh, send an electronic huddle. So this electronic huddle basically just, it is just an email to the entire department saying that today we're gonna treat uh, 30 patients on true beam one. We have a BID case or we have an SRS case or special cases. So everybody in the department uh, we'll know what's what's going to happen on that specific day, and 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 I think I think everybody in the department likes this email in the morning. So so we all know what's going on on that specific day. Our radiation therapists they have a daily huddle. Usually it's from uh, it's a fifteen minute uh, meeting uh, during lunchtime, and they talk about specific uh, safety issues. And then the weekly huddle we do it uh, every Wednesday. And uh, these meetings are very good because they promote safety culture in the entire uh, department. So, so everybody is always focused on the safety delivery uh, to the treatment. Next slide. 
So this is just uh, quickly two questions that I wanted to ask the audience. Uh, if you are called uh, at the machine as a medical physicist and your output is 7% high, so so what, what would you do? Would you treat, would you not treat? Or so so actually, so as, as we saw, so the, from the recommendations of TG report 142, the recommendation is above 5% 5, 5 we cannot treat. Uh, we have to check the output and if I get called to the machine and I see 7% high, then I will definitely uh, do an independent check myself and then if I see that it is more than 7%, then I will adjust the output down before we treat the patient. Mm. And the second question is, uh, uh, the second question may be not uh, related to QA, but this is um, uh, if we are treating a patient with a pacemaker or defibrillator and you are using the 15x so uh, so is this is this a, a good practice so basically uh, uh, there is a report about pacemakers and def defibrillators a, a APM report and they definitely do not recommend using the 15x because of neutron production so this is just quick uh, questions next slide please Yeah, so I think we are done. So this is just references and uh, uh, I couldn't put all the references here, but these are really good uh, APM reports that uh, I invite everybody to go through. Uh, they are very useful. And there is also very useful information uh, webinars uh, and the links are below. We passed and Varian and APM, they have a really good report. Uh, thank you very much. It, it took a little bit longer than I expected. So, um, uh, so thank you. Questions? Thank you, Mohamed, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. the great, uh, great talks about QA and QC in addition therapy. So, the audience have some questions that make it on the chat room. I don't know if you can see it, Mohamed. Ismail, you can read the, the question. Yes, the last three questions, I think. Yes, Two from Mari Mahanna and one from uh, Ivan. Yes, so from Harry Mahanna, he said that uh, you said at Innova daily comp daily QA are done by the therapist. Which parameters are checked by him and how it comes that it is done by the medical physicists? What is the first question? Mm -hmm. The microphone, uh, Mohammed. We can't hear you. Yes, yes that's why I was kicked out of the meeting. So, so from what I heard, uh, so the question is, who performs the daily QA? What was what was the question? Who performs the daily QA, and what are the checks? Is that the question? Done by the therapist. Why not? It's not done by the medical physician at your center. Okay. So, okay. So, so in the U.S., in the U.S., not only in my center, in the U.S., all morning QA is performed by the radiation therapist. Uh, it is, a, it is, a, I would say, uh, uh, an easy QA to be performed, and physicists basically delegated this, uh, these tests for therapists. And it is done, like in the clinic, it is done uh, at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. So we just delegated, we trained, we trained therapists how to do this. So, uh, so we delegated these tests for them to do. Uh, it's not mandatory by physicists to do. So what we check uh, for the dissymmetry part, what they check for the dissymmetry part, they do uh, they do the, uh, the symmetry. They do beam output and uh, output flatness and symmetry. Uh, they do it every single day, and uh, all of them they have to be within three percent. And uh, and uh, for the mechanical part, we do uh, for the mechanical and OBI. Uh, we check the the uh, we check the ODI. Uh, we check. Um, we check the ODI, we check the gantry angle, we check the table movement, 
but all these tests are based on OBI as well as because basically we take KV pair, a P lat at an offset position with a Q, and then we align using the uh, using the uh, the application variant application and we move the couch. And then we go inside the room and we make sure the cube went to the correct position and we check our lasers as well. So we check several things on the daily QA and uh, all of them are actually listed in the APM TG142 uh, that I highly recommend. And we do the safety checks as well. We open the door when the beam is on uh, we check the interlocks the, uh, for the radiation source, the KV radiation source uh, for the panel, the EPID, which we do all these checks as well. Uh, this is one second question. Is IPM test group documents considered as gold for USA and Canada? For other countries such as Europe, Africa, Asia, the IA standard are rather other followed. Any, any? Do you see any different among these standards? I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I. I couldn't. I'm sorry. I could not really hear the the, the question clearly. Hear the question. You said that the IPM test group are the the gold standard for the USA and Canada. In Europe and Africa and Asia, the IA standard are used rather than IPM standards. So. Uh, which, uh, if, if you see any difference between this, between IAA and IPM protocols regarding the QA? Uh, so, uh, so I apologize, I'm not too familiar with, uh, with the IAA standards, but I do believe they are very similar to the AAPM standard. I don't, I don't expect a difference between the AAPM and the IAEA. Uh, so, uh, so I, I believe they are they are very similar standards. Okay, but the third question is, uh, what do you do if you get the QA fade more than one in Porta What What's QA what's fail? Oh, uh, oh, you mean with Porta dosimetry? Okay. So, it's it's an interesting question because uh, I was called uh, from a friend of mine, physicist, yesterday actually, and his QA failed miserably. His QA was like very very bad, and he did with the portal dosimetry. So so always when something like this happen, uh, we have we have to go to the basics always. So first of all, like if I would approach. Uh, this case, I have a failed QA, then I'm definitely going to check all my setup. Uh, I make sure the imager is going to the right position. Uh, let's say at ISO, this is how I calibrated my device. But uh, we, had, uh, we had a case where physicists did the QA and the imager was not at ISO. The imager was at a higher distance at 120 SSD, I believe, and her QA failed as well. So the setup is uh, is most of the time the setup is the issue. If it is not from the setup, if I repeat the QA and I find that my QA uh, setup is good, everything is good, then I will think about re recalibrating the imager. Okay, that's my second step. I recalibrate the imager, and then if I recalibrate my imager and I still have a QA that fails, then I dig more. Then I go to uh, my output, I check my output. I see how my output are. Are they high? Are they low? Are they good? Then if my output are good and my QA still fails, then uh, then I will, I will kind of recommission. I'm not gonna recommission, but I'm gonna check everything uh, that I used for commissioning. So the interesting case about uh, about my, my friend who called me yesterday, Varian for the portal dissymmetry, they use uh, basically uh, in the machine itself, you, you have to have open fields, okay, open flood fields. And those flood fields somehow disappear. 
So the machine, uh, so the machine was capturing the key wave, but the normalization was completely off, completely off. And so after he, after I gave him the correct flood fields, then everything uh, he repeated the QA and everything was was passing fine. So, so I'm not sure if that answers the question. But if I have a QA, I, I think I think in my experience, uh, maybe more than a thousand QAs, I had only two or three cases that failed the QA after I repeated, and we had to replan. So only three or five out of a thousand of QAs that I asked the symmetries to replan this case because the plan was highly optimized and the machine could not deliver what the plan was asking for. It was really, really highly optimized plan. So I asked the symmetries to replan, to replan the case. That was only three times out of more than a thousand of cases. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, are there presently any standard for QA QC when it comes to using treatment machine delivering small feeds such as tomotherapy supernight? Uh, I could not hear the question. I just heard tomo, but that's it. Are there presently any standards for QA and QC when it comes to using treatment machine delivering small fields such as tomotherapy and super life? Okay. So for the small fields, like we just commissioned, we just commissioned SRS map check for cyber knife QA. Uh, so SRS map check is a, is a 2D matrix provided by Sun Nuclear. Uh, and uh, so for the small fields, like when we started, we started generating the criteria, the pass and fail criteria for the SRS SBRT cases. So, so the last AAPM TG report 218, that's the last AAPM report published. Uh, and in this report, the only recommendation they give for SRS and SBRT cases is to use tighter criteria, more, more, more tighter criteria than we use for just regular VMAP. So what we decided to do, and there are some papers, there are some papers, not AAPM report, but there are some papers, uh, some physicists did, did an amazing job on defining their own criteria. Uh, it cannot be less than 3%, 2 millimeters. It must be, for SRS SBRT, you are more concerned about the mechanical, you are more concerned about positioning accuracy than the dose. So for these cases, we do, we do 3% one millimeter. So, so the DTA, the distance to agreement is smaller. We do one millimeter instead of two millimeters or higher. But the dose, you can leave it 3%, it's okay. So we have two levels. We have 3% one millimeter, this is level one. And we have 5% one millimeter, and this is level two. That's what we use in the clinic for SRS and SBRT cases. Okay, so the, the last question is a little bit out of topic. How would you anticipate the future of ion beam therapy compared to the existing photon therapy since the biological endpoint of the high lead radiation is really encouraging? Uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is, like you mentioned, it's out of topic, but so, uh, so, so I'm just going to yeah. speak about the, here in the U.S., I don't know how the ion beam delivered uh, worldwide, but at least from the U.S. perspective, uh, the proton treatment is very, very expensive here in the U.S., very expensive as well as uh, very challenging technically. So you have the technical part, which is the challenge number one. You have the second, the second part, which is very expensive treatment. And uh, so when you are comparing between photon and, and the proton plan, you have, to, uh, you have to put the list what are the things that are better with proton, things that are worse with proton. 
and uh, and in theory proton is much better because you don't have the exit dose you have less scatter dose but also proton at least today is very very challenging it's it's still not not uh, not as advanced as uh, as photons so we can still we can still give good good treatment with photon and that low dose from the scatter is uh, is uh, is uh, is basically very low. I, I'm not a physician to say the secondary malignancies. Uh, for sure, this patient who received the head and neck treatment will get a secondary malignancy in 10 years from now. I'm not a physician to say that, but at least from the data, uh, these secondary malignancies are not uh, from these low doses are, are not uh, are not that big to to be concerned about at least for now. Okay, I have a question, Mohammed. It's my idea of question. Uh, first question, Mohammed, is uh, regarding for the flatness and uh, symmetry. Uh, what's your recommendation regarding the flats and symmetry? And uh, the maximum value is 3% as in IPM 51. So for flatness and symmetry, uh, therapists, they do, they do the check every single day. So we set we set flatness and symmetry three uh, percent. That's our first level, three percent for flatness and symmetry. On an annual basis, so the the AAPM report that is a good reference for this is uh, is a TG one forty two. So um, so on an annual basis, on an annual basis, we aim for less than 2% for flatness and less than 1% for symmetry. So from the base, of course, from the baseline, it's always from the baseline. Baseline is what you captured on day one after you accepted the machine or you commissioned the machine. So it's from the baseline, 1% for symmetry and 2% for flatness on a yearly basis. And on a daily basis, it's 3%. That's what we do here. Yes. Second question is regarding uh, the imaging practice in radiotherapy treatment. Uh, have you an idea about the delivered dose to patient during imaging before the treatment? The, Im the imaging dose is very small. It's very small. Uh, uh, I believe the worst is from the MV, but, but now the technology is really advanced. Now we even have the 2.5x and the uh, we do IGRT image guided every single day. If the dose is high, then we definitely it definitely a concern. It is not a concern at this point. It's very small. It is true that we operate with Alara as low as reasonably achievable. So if we can reduce this uh, imaging dose low, that would be great. But you do need that imaging to align your patient every single day. Uh, with a high accuracy, but as I mentioned, it is very very small dose. Have you a and, number? And, have you a number? Uh, how or the range of the dose during this part imaging? I would say it is. A, I would say in the order of milligray. There, there is milligray. I think there is a. There is a. Uh, milligrade to few centigrades to I would say three four centigrades. So uh, there is actually a good uh, there is actually a good papers that talk about the imaging doses from from all kind of uh, IGRT techniques from X-ray tube from CT from from CBCT from 4D CT from 4D CB. Now we have even the 4D CBCT that we use for the SBRT. So it's more dose to the patient, but it's still still uh, not significant uh, to the point that we consider that dose. Okay, I think this part, it's uh, related with the competence of the physicist, uh, maybe and the number of the image taken during this part. Uh, uh, could you so I think it's related to the number of image taken during this uh, imaging. Okay, so what was the qu what's the question? 
so the question is now yes is that that's just a discussion but uh, uh, finally have your recommendation concerning this uh, this part because uh, uh, we have uh, preparing a report in ecrp task group uh, 116 regarding this this uh, uh, this uh, this part of uh, treatment have your recommendation mr mohammed uh, uh, concerning sorry, the I imaging have your recommendation concerning uh, imaging practice in radiotherapy? Okay, so so as a clinical physicist, um, so uh, now we have more and more new technologies that are coming. We have surface guided, which is coming. Surface guided, you have no radiation dose, which is really good because basically you have cameras that are tracking uh, are tracking the the patient surface but this is not applicable to all cases because when you treat a prostate uh, and you track a, a, so the belly then this is this is not the right approach you have to you have to you need your images you need because you are looking for the rectum rectum uh, prostate interface to align the per patient every day when we do the CBCT. I mean, what I would say is, uh, like I said again, uh, at this point, this imaging dose is not a concern because this imaging dose is really uh, like for the breast, what we do for a breast, we do, we do day one and then we do weekly basis. So we do, for breast, we do the first day we do uh, KV pairs and MVs, portals, and then we do every week from that. Uh, and now we have surface guided that that's really helps us align the patient consistently every single day. But uh, uh, if, if it's actually, it is actually your call, if you are a physicist that uh, very confident on your setup every single day that and you can prove that and you can show that to your physician uh, then then uh, then it is not a concern you can remove uh, you can adjust your practice but uh, but uh, I would say for SBRT cases SRSs SRSs even with the service guided we are not relying 100% with service guided we are still relying on IGRT, image guided, we're still relying on x-rays. So I don't think it's gonna go away anytime soon. Honestly, we, we need that. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, I think there are last question from Ait Sheikh Sonia. Uh, question is the quality control of dynamic MLC. Do you have daily control recommended? Thank you. This we is the last not. question. We, we we do not do uh, we do not do a daily QA for MLCs. For MLCs, the recommendation is basically on a weekly basis, as well as monthly. So we do we do more on a monthly basis because we consider uh, our IMRTs as daily. So if if you have something not right from your MLC, you will catch it when you do IMRT QA. Your IMRT QA will fail. So uh, we do not do daily. So so uh, we do on a on a weekly basis. We do the picky fence test on a weekly basis, and then we do on a monthly basis more advanced. We do the MLC speed. We do the gantry. We do it's a more advanced and varying. Actually, they have they have the test ready, so you can just download them from the web varying website, and you can run them on a monthly basis, or you can create your own from TPS and create your own. Uh, just one comment for uh, in my Unix I, I prefer daily uh, using uh, ion chamber. So uh, I prefer a picket fence, a dynamic picket fence, and I make an ion chamber between uh, water slabs and I measure the dose. So, with this with this uh, method, you can check every day if you have a shift in the dose daily. So I think this 
you can do it in daily query for uh, dynamic MLG. Okay, so uh, if there is no other question, we can close this, uh, this webinar. Okay, thank you. Ahmed, any last comments? Thank you very much and see you next month. Okay. Yes, so we will meet uh, in one month for the second part of this webinar. Thank you. Thank see you. you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Could, could you please yeah. share the recorded, the recorded lectures for us? Yes, the recorded will be available in uh, the in the YouTube channel. Hello, medical physics. No problem, Mister. Uh, so uh, the so the recorded video you will be available uh, uh, next few days in this channel in the chat. Thank, Thank you very much. Our, this is our channel in YouTube. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Ha have a nice time. Goodbye. All the best. Thank you so much. Okay, anyone interested for the recorded video, please follow our channel, Hello Medical Physics. You will find uh, a lot of, uh, you, will, you will find all our webinars there. Okay.